If you're considering upgrading your endpoint protection platform, you need to consider how the MITRE ATT&CK framework is going to be incorporated in your future solution. We'll talk about how the MITRE ATT&CK based solutions provide an important protective layer in defending your devices. Then we'll discuss how you can use them to improve your security posture in other areas. Hi, I'm Steve Murphy. I'm a Vice President at ARG, and while I work for ARG, this video is my own and does not represent the views or opinions of my employer. This channel is dedicated to helping IT leaders make great business decisions. Endpoint security has never been more important. Our endpoints are traveling with workers or configured off-site in the cloud, well away from the protective uh, perimeters of a private office or data center. With most companies now supporting full-time work from home, a hybrid work environment, and full-time on-site, managing endpoint security is complicated. Now, endpoint security comes in three main flavors. First, you have your traditional anti-malware or antivirus services. These are older solutions that rely mostly and uh, are almost entirely upon signatures of malicious code. When a file is hashed, you get a unique hash value or signature. If just one letter of that code in the file is changed, the hash value of that file will be different from the original file. Hashing allows very quick comparison of files to determine authenticity. And a hash file will always return the same hash value no matter when or where it's hashed, as long as you're using an industry standard hash algorithm. This hash value or signature lets you quickly validate authenticity of a file, or in our case, compare it to a database of known malicious files. Now, traditional anti-malware, antivirus is a pretty basic solution and not recommended for businesses. The next level is endpoint protection platforms, or EPPs. An EPP is also a signature-based solution, but it includes some advanced features such as the ability to provide investigation and remediation in response to an incident. An EPP is also provide data encryption and data loss prevention, among some other features. Another category of endpoint protection is EDR, or Endpoint Detection and Response. EDR's main value proposition is that they seek out zero-day or polymorphic attacks on machines. A zero-day attack is a malicious code that's not yet been cataloged in the threat intelligence databases where all the signatures of malware are stored and indexed. Polymorphic attacks change their code slightly after each propagation, resulting in a unique file that will generate a unique hash, avoiding detection of the EPPs that will or by the EPPs that will require a hash value to be in the threat detection database. So polymorphic threats are known attacks, but they cloak themselves during each installation, making them harder to detect. EDRs identify threats by using artificial intelligence and machine learning to identify machine behavior that's out of the norm. EDRs can also take proactive measures to isolate and remediate. I have a full video on EPPs and EDRs, which I'll link in the description of this video if you want more information on how to compare the two solutions. But today, EPPs and EDRs are converging. The degree of convergence varies greatly among solutions, and so considerable due diligence is required to ensure your chosen solution covers your given requirements. Many EPP and EDR providers still advocate having both solutions, an EPP for protection and an EDR when something slips by the EPP. So while the following conversation really applies to EDRs, it might be relevant to both EPPs and EDRs to some degree in the future as that convergence continues. Okay, we've indicated above that the typical way EDRs detect malicious activity on a device is to compare the traditional or baseline activities of a machine to the current activities. If the current activities deviate from the norm, then potential cases log. If the unusual activities build to a level predefined in the platform, an alert will be sent out, and the platform may take a prescribed action on the machine to mitigate the probable potential threat. This process is highly automated and controlled by variables defined in the system. Because it relies on uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, it's good, but not perfect. Some incidents may remain unidentified until serious damage is done. Further, the bad guys know this and are developing their wares to avoid a detection. So to address this weakness in the platform missing indicators through uh, artificial intelligence and machine learning, EDR providers have added an additional layer of detection capability. We're seeing more and more EDRs include MITRE ATT&CK framework in their analysis of endpoint activity. So what is the MITRE ATT&CK framework? 
Well, first of all, MITRE is a United States-based not-for-profit company that provides technology consulting to the U.S. government and to large commercial firms. MITRE is highly regarded for its objectivity and thought leadership. And they developed this attack framework in 2013 while modeling attack behavior for the U.S. government. In the attack framework, MITRE describes various stages of a typical threat or incident. ATT&CK is an acronym that stands for Adversarial Tactics, Techniques, and Common Knowledge. I won't go into the details, that would be probably another video I'll, I'll do at some point in the future, but at a high level, the MITRE ATT&CK framework is a knowledge base and model for cyber adversarial behavior. ATT&CK describes the various stages of common incidents. There are many tactic categories of an incident, such as reconnaissance, access, execution, like privilege es escalation, defense evasion, discovery, lateral movement, and so forth. These are just about half the categories, but you get the idea. Beyond the top level tactic categories, there are almost 200 different techniques which are documented, which are further broke down into about 400 sub-techniques. So MITRE gets very granular in, in describing and cataloging the various stages of typical incidents. Here's the thing that joins EDR and other endpoint products with the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Malicious actors can spend a lot of energy hiding from endpoint security platforms. They're getting better and better, making it harder and harder for the tools to alert and take mitigation action. This is an unstoppable process of bad guys versus defensive measures. But fundamentally, there are only so many, so many ways to execute an attack. The MITRE framework documents the steps that all incidents must take to achieve their goal. I like to think of it this way. When you have to drive from one place to another, there may be hundreds of possible routes that you could take. But fundamentally, you have to take the same steps to get to your destination. You have to put your shoes on, you have to get your car keys, you have to turn on the engine, and then you might take one of uh, several different routes to get to your ultimate goal, and then you get out of the car and so forth. The MITRE ATT&CK framework documents those steps in a cyber event. When your endpoint solution incorporates the MITRE framework, it adds an additional discovery process or an additional layer of discovery of malicious behavior on your devices. Normally, the activity mapping will happen in a sandbox environment with the EDR. The EDR will extract a suspicious object and execute the object in a sandbox environment. This allows for isolation and controlled evaluation, a laboratory, if you will, to observe the behavior of the object. If the indicators of attack map to a known malicious source, descriptions of the activities and mitigation techniques are returned to the security analyst, and you get a roadmap for resolving the issue. Now, I promised another benefit of using the MITRE ATT&CK framework in your EDR, and that is that security analysts can take an event, evaluate it against the framework, and identify the stage or category of, an, of the attack in which it was discovered. And then by using the, attack, uh, the activity mapping capabilities of the EDR, identify weaknesses in their security posture that prevented the threat from being discovered sooner. So if an incident was not discovered until it actually impacted the organization, why wasn't the malware identified during the scanning stage or the lateral movement stage or any other preceding stage? This is how you can isolate and uh, identify potential weaknesses in your posture and address those. You have to ask these questions on how the attack developed. The security team can then bolster the measures in key areas that, seem, that are seen to be lacking. So you can use the MITRE framework tools to both protect in real time and evaluate and strengthen your posture over time. If you're evaluating an EDR or even an EPP platform, ask about how the MITRE attack framework is leveraged and how your organization might use it. It's an additional added value that may sway your decision between products. And if you want additional assistance, feel free to reach out to me. My contact information is in the, in the description of this video. And if you got some value out of this video, I'd appreciate a like and a thumbs up. And thank you very much in advance for doing that. Lastly, if you want to find your way back to this channel in the future, just to hit that subscribe button. It will put my videos in your feed and you can come back to the channel at your convenience. Thanks very much for watching, and I hope you have a great day.